Pete Show, finally. Yeah, we have done it. Pete, say hello to the fans, their friends. Say hello, hello to our everybody. subscribers. Glad I'm back. I'm glad that you're there. Yeah, we have missed you. Thank you. And by the way, we have been growing steadily every month since we, well, while we've been offline. We keep getting more and more subscribers every single month. We're, we're getting close to a couple thousand now. So, and that was, that's because our loyal followers keep referring it. Thank you guys. Thank you for referring us. Thank you for keeping this alive. And, you know, we do have some news. We are going to be uh, meeting this Sunday with Norris uh, Preston at Sony Pictures. And, and we're going to be putting together a Pete the Pick. Well, that's the working title for now. TV scripted series. So Pete, let's get right into it. Okay. I think we we're going to talk about John Gotti. When did you first meet John Gotti? Well, I met John for the first time when I was with Roy. You know, I didn't even know John at the time. And uh, after, after they spoke, Roy introduced me to John. You know, he was a capital at the time. And he says he's a good guy. And that was really the first time I met him. We really didn't talk much. He invited me to come down to his club, the uh, Fisher Gay Club in Queens. And I thanked him. And, uh, you know, one day I was driving to the area that passed by, brought me in, introduced me to all the guys, Angelo, Tony Roach, you know, and that was it. And then, uh, you know, time went on, and we had our own little private club, not the Gemini. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's So you, uh, so that was the first time you met him was at the Gemini, right, with Roy? Correct. Okay, so now, they, yeah, you were telling me about that club you had, and then he used to come by there, that's, it's a private club called The Club. There was yeah. no name, right? No name, that's right. It was one of those joints. So that was you and Anthony and all those guys that had that? Yes. Yes, it was. We okay. had a little, little, little private area to have a few drinks or whatever and eat. All right. So he would he would drop by there from time to time. Oh, yeah. Come in. He'd come for dinner once in a while. Boy, he'd buy the dinner and come by. And he was the type of guy, who was a, you know, Everyday guy, you know what I'm saying? Before he became who he became, and uh, yeah. he would sit down at the table and bullshit with everybody, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he would start a, a, a food fight, pick up a meatball. Oh, this is the meatball and, thing, right? Yeah, yeah, he's funny, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, the meatball thing. All right, so yeah, tell us about the meatball thing. How did that shit start? We just started eating, and John would look around the table and everybody would say, it's on, and wham, here would come a meatball on it. <laughs> spaghetti. It's crazy, fun, fun, crazy, you know. And you were all in suits hanging out. Yeah, yeah, we were. So you mess. He, he liked to just mess everybody the fuck up, huh? Yeah, thank, thank God my mother owned the dry cleaners. <laughs> okay, so after and then he came by there a lot uh, or often, hey, not a lot. Stop but, that one, then. Yeah. So, so after all that, then then you were you actually were his hairstylist. Well, his barber, whatever you want to call it, in MCC, right? Tell us the story yes. about that. Well, we were in MCC. That's right in the middle of Manhattan, right on the Canal Street, Chinatown, Little Italy. And uh, it's got 11 stories. And right. I happened to be from the barber, so I was able to travel up and down cutting hair, right? And John, mm -hmm. John was a meticulous guy. About three times a week, he'd have me come down to the attorney's room, like when they cut his hair, which, of course, was not legal at the time, but... He didn't give a shit. Uh, one day I'm down there. I'm coming down, right? And all of a sudden, this guy comes in to me. He says, where you going? I said, I'm going down to the attorney room. He says, what are you doing with your barber kid? He says, uh, I said, why? He says, you know, that's not right. So uh, when, when I finally got down to the floor where the attorney room was, there was, a, there was John sitting in there with his attorney looking at me. And there's a guy laughing, holding his scissors up. <laughs> he waving bye bye, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, about three hours later, I got released. Now, wait, hold on, hold on. For those that don't know, when you're on the floor where he was on down by the you know, waiting to go see the judge or whatever, you can't have scissors or things, sharp objects down on that floor, right? I don't think the guards are even allowed to carry their guns down there, are they? No, no guns, no weapons. So. Right, right. So that's why we were having a problem. So just for people who don't know what we know, I just wanted to clarify that. Now go ahead. Three hours later. <laughs> I told him, I said, John, you know, 
they're gonna get me one time. He said, I don't worry about it, I got you covered, I got you covered. Sure as shit. This one guy really liked John. He was too uh he was too manicured, too uh, you know. John was very well groomed, even in prison. You know what I mean? That's how he kept himself. So a couple times a week, I said, John, your hair couldn't grow in three days. He said, B, come on, just cut it. Snip, snip, and I was done. And this guy got to get on the elevator the same time as I did. He says, we go, B. And I says, uh, we're going down to the next. So when it hit the ground, voice. He, he said, let me see what you got on you. He says, a scissor, huh? <laughs> and he knew. He says, oh, you going to see John? I says, no, nah, I'm just going down. He says, you going to see John, huh? I says, that's what you say. When the door opened up, he looked at John and smiled. <laughs> and he said, turn around, cuff me. I said, wow. But three hours later, I was back out of the, the hole, back with the barber, doing all the whole things I was doing. So how did that happen? <laughs> I have no idea. Right. <laughs> nice. Little John influence, huh? So oh, the, the reason I, I brought John up and the reason we're talking about John today is to establish that you know who have you know him as a regular guy, not from what we see in the papers or the pages. You knew John, so right. so that's why I wanted to bring that up before I bring up this guy. Now this guy, well, we all know who he is. He turned against John, and he was his best friend and right hand, I guess. Uh, Sammy the Bull, um, Gravano. Why do you think? I, I don't. I don't know. Tell me what you think about what he did. Well, I know in my heart, I believe in my heart anyhow, that John would have never told on anybody, you know what I mean? He may have been flamboyant and all that shit, but he was believed in the code, you know what I mean? So when that came about, him Sammy saying that he, he did this because he thought John was going to turn on him, that was, that was Sammy's reasoning for what he did, you know? Like, I don't want to go to prison for fucking forever, so I'm going to give them what they want. Now, they would have gave him fucking anything to get on that stand and testify against John. And I mean anything. You know, right. you know like I said, uh, later on, I'd like to talk a little more about that. You know, how he, what he got to do with that is crazy. You know? Sure. But with the government, I, I don't understand how they, they did that, but they got away with it. He had but 19 I, I, murders. He did 19 murders that he confessed to and he did five years. That's a I parking guess. ticket. That's a parking ticket for every murder, 90 days, right? Yeah, 90 days. Is that amazing? It's like, it's like driving without a, a license for every murder, right? <laughs> now, here's a guy admitting out of his mouth that he did this, right? And here's John sitting at the bench table saying, I didn't kill nobody. Right. I mean, how the fuck does that really work? Excuse me, brothers. How does that really work? You know what I mean? 19 <laughs> murders. Three, mo three months for every time you whack somebody. Nice. Nice work if you can get it, huh? I don't know, I guess. Crazy, well, right? You know, you know, that's just like uh, Whitey Bulger. He had yeah, yeah. Had his back pocket, do what he wanted. He had to cut a bunch. Yeah, right. So that's that's a piece of work. So how did you feel about what what? Uh, how did you feel personally about what Sammy did? Do you have anything you want to just say to Sammy personally right now? Well, this is my personal feel. You know, he, he, he was in a position that was high, high regarded as upper, upper upper class in, in, in the situation he was in. Everybody looked up to him, you know what I mean? In that case, because, you know, you got to be somebody to be an underboss. And what he did, what he did is, is he really put the finishing touch of what I believe was anything of honor and respect. You know, when a boss or an underboss does that, what does anybody up below have got to think? You know what I mean? Well, if he could do it, you know, it's just like kids. Well, if he could throw a rock at the wind, so could I, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean that's, yeah. that's, so from that point on, I lost all, all heart. Everybody says, oh, I don't respect them. What they really don't realize was what's lost was integrity. Right. Integrity was gone. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't matter no more. It was every man for himself. You know? Yeah. It was, a time, it was a time when every man stood up. And that's what it was. You know? Yeah. I mean, let me put it this way. These prisons would be half full if it wasn't for people telling on their friends. Friends. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Friends. Yeah. It's, that's the hard part that hurts. Yeah, it's a tough one, man. Well, I'm sorry that you, you went through that time that you did with all of that. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I was talking to somebody the other day who's, you know, you know, loosely related family that knows Sammy. He's like second whatever. Right. And uh, 
their opinion is, well, you know, he was fake. Like John was going to turn on him. It's like, okay, like this today's whole opinion with even guys who think they're gangster ish. They, they just think that it's okay to tell if you, if it's bad enough, you could tell now back in the day from what I understood and what even my mother taught me, you just don't tell anybody. You stand up, you make your bed, you lay in it. Right. No matter how bad the bed is. Right. So I mean, I think that's what you're trying to say is the same thing is that there's no, there's nothing left that you can rely on. And there's no men that just stand up and be men. I had an uncle tell me one time, if you can win like a man, you'll come out like a man. You know? Right. You always have that respect no matter where you go. Right. But here's a guy gets out to that whatever witness protection break and he's still bragging about how bad he is. Right. But I, I'd right. like to continue about it on another series. I Let's do that. Let's it. cut it short tonight because it's a long night. We both had a long day, but we're back, guys. We're back, and we're going to give you more. And Petey's looking good. You're looking good, Thank Petey. You. Thank you, Mr. Gismondi. Right. <laughs> right. I'd like to say something. Sure, uh, say Mr. something. Mr. Norris is listening and looking. Hey, buddy, there's your hat. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Thank all you. Right. I love these people. Stay yeah. healthy. That's all I ask. And stay with us. Because there's a lot more to come. Oh, there's a lot more to come. And don't miss our TV series that we're coming up with. Keep rooting for us, guys. And keep telling your friends. Let's pile these fucking subscribers up. Love you, Pete. Love you, I'm glad we're doing this again. I'm glad we're doing it again. Brother. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yay.